Hello and welcome to the Salvation Army's annual carol concert at the Royal Albert Hall in London. People are just arriving for tonight's concert as we come together in Christmas celebration with the Salvation Army. Tonight we'll enjoy music from our international staff band led by Dr Steve Cobb and international staff songsters led by Dorothy Nanskeville. So why not sing along at home? We'll be welcoming to the stage special guests Nick Hewer, Baroness Fluella Benjamin, Sunita, For Him, The Music Man Project and more. And I'll be backstage bringing you a glimpse from behind the scenes. And of course we'll be joined by some familiar faces offering support with messages of hope and encouragement. Later on we'll let you know how you can support our work, but for now, let's get on with the show.
Good evening and a very warm welcome to Celebrating Christmas with the Salvation Army. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dean Pallant and it's a joy to be back in the Royal Albert Hall. Thank you. <laughs> this historic building is celebrating its 150th anniversary and the Royal Albert Hall and the Salvation Army have a long association. Our founder, William Booth, first preached from this platform in 1895 to a crowd of 10,000 people. Health and safety rules weren't the same in those days. There have now been more than 400 Salvation Army events in this place, so it is just wonderful to be here, and I'm so glad that you're here for this spectacular evening. We're very grateful to our generous sponsors who feature in the program, in particular Knox Cropper, the entertainer toy company, and also McLaren Construction. Thank you very much. I also extend a very special welcome to those who are joining us online. We're delighted that the international leaders of the Salvation Army are with us tonight, General Brian Peddle and Commissioner Rosalie Peddle. We're also privileged to have superb guest readers, Baroness Floella Benjamin, Nick Hewer, and Sinita. Thank you for supporting the Salvation Army, and we're looking forward to hearing from you later in the program. But before we go further, let's pause. We want to recognize that Jesus Christ is central to our celebrations this evening. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, amidst the light, luxury, and brilliance of this evening, we do not forget the poverty, simplicity, and meaning of your birth more than 2,000 years ago. As we sing carols, listen to wondrous music, and enjoy being together, we ask your spirit to be very present among us, whether we are here in the Royal Albert Hall or watching from around the world. Jesus, be near to us and inspire us tonight and always. Amen. Now, if you're able, please stand and let's sing our first carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And for the rest of the evening, just follow the instructions on the screen and uh, we'll march on through the evening. So please stand. Thank you, Bandmaster.
Well, that was fantastic. Let's go see what else is happening backstage. So I'm here with For Him, a new lineup, exciting. Um, and these guys are well known to the Royal Albert Hall and the Christmas Carol concert from the Salvation Army. Guys, are you excited? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Very excited. Bit nervous? Bit nervous, <laughs> but it's all right. We're about to go on. We're going to go on. And what are you singing for us tonight? We're going to sing Mary Did You Know? And we're also going to sing our Raise a Hallelujah. It's been requested as uh, part of a testimony. Fantastic, fantastic. We're really excited to hear you sing. I won't hold you up. Go Thank and get you. in there and Thank sing you. your socks off. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. I'll just be back in a moment. We really hope you're enjoying tonight's concert. You can support the work of the Salvation Army by calling 0800 083 6644 and give whatever you can. Thank you. Street and I'm delighted to have the opportunity this evening of saying thank you to the Salvation Army for all the wonderful work that they do and to say thank you for the support and resources they put into less obvious areas like the care of victims of human trafficking Thank you for being at the Royal Albert Hall on this very special evening to support and enjoy the Salvation Army. And I wish you all a very happy Christmas and a healthy new year. Hi, I'm Anita Dobson and here you are at another Salvation Army Christmas concert to celebrate the wonderful work that they do. I'd like to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy and hope-filled New Year. Lots of love from me. Take care and have fun. Mwah. Bye. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. 
He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was made by the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
festive greetings, everyone. I'd like to read to you Luke 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace amongst those whom he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorified and praising God, for they had heard and seen as it has been told them. Merry Christmas to you all.
Every Tuesday, the Salvation Army in Leon C hosts the Music Man Project, a music and education service for children and adults with learning disabilities. The Music Man Project started just over 20 years ago. I decided that really my vocation in life was to teach people with learning disabilities. Well, I'm a Salvation Army adherent and my family all worship with me here in Leon C Salvation Army. And the Salvation Army has no doubt helped me to spread the Music Man Project around the country. It's like a, another family, like I've got one at home, but then I come here and then you're with another one, aren't you? Quite a few of them have got more disabilities than me, so I give them a hand to whatever they need. When you feel down, when you come here, you start singing, you start to feel and enjoy. Uh, <laughs> the greatest gift I think I can give as a musician is the chance to perform. And, and we've found that that has made a huge difference to their lives. I sing Love Shine the Light. I sang it at the Cliffs Pavilion in 2009 when I was 21. I sang it the first time at the Royal Abbot Hall in 2019. It was always David's favourite because he liked it. We've had many life-changing moments and examples of, of where our music has made a difference to people beyond my wildest dreams. And I, I call these people the best of humanity and I love them dearly. The Music Man Project is having a tremendous impact throughout the UK and internationally, working in schools, colleges and in the community. For the last few months, the team at Leon C has been busy rehearsing for tonight's performance here at the Royal Albert Hall.
of the world. Let the love light carry. Let the love light carry. Light up the magic for every boy and girl. Let our love shine a light in every corner of the world. And we're all gonna shine a light together. Oh, shine a light, my faith. Brothers and sisters in every little part. Let our love shine a light in every corner of our hearts. And we're all gonna shine a light together. Hello, my name's Leslie Ash, and I would just like to give a big thank you to the Salvation Army for all the work they do all year round, and most recently with refugees and their families within our communities. So have a wonderful night tonight, and Merry Christmas. Hello everybody, Sue Pollard here, and I'm just reminding you, as if you needed reminding, of all the fabulous work the Salvation Army volunteers do. Apart from being great musicians, all of them, they, they do so many lovely things for the general public, especially at Christmas time, when people are cold and tired and got all sorts of problems. So, would you please join me in wishing them all a fabulous time themselves and giving as much as you can, as generously as you can feel that you can afford. Please encourage them to do all the fabulous work that they do. I appreciate your time. I've got to go to the shops now. Happy Christmas, everyone. Lots of love to you. Bye. Hi, I'm Sunita. Thank you so much for having me. Um, feeling really blessed to be able to read the scriptures tonight. Um, and also just wishing everybody a, a very, very early Merry Christmas. Um, thankfully spent with our loved ones again this year. Um, I'm going to be reading to you from Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 9. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. That they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations and their riches you shall glory. Because their shame was double and dishonour was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them the recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their defendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. 
Amen. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. A hundred firefighters are battling a fire near Elephant and Castle Station in South London. Majors Carl and Ruth Gray from the Salvation Army's Emergency Services have been called to offer support. The Salvation Army have been involved with supporting London Fire Brigade for many, many years. I think it's well over 35 years. We have a relationship where we get called out to very large incidents, major incidents, and when we respond, our emergency vehicle is a canteen. It's a, a kitchen on wheels. Around that, we have the opportunity to just chat with them. So you do get to see the same faces, you do get to see the same firefighters, and that's a good way of building the relationships so that they are aware of what we do. I've got a colleague who would say, oh, you know, I don't necessarily see the mission in giving a cup of tea to a, a fireman, but if you've been on the ground, for instance, at Grenfell, you know, with our, our responders, you know, coming alongside people, praying with them, giving them emotional and pastoral support. I see the support of the Salvation Army as invaluable, to be honest with you. Uh, we're very, very privileged to have uh, access to such a facility. But also, it's mentally a very taxing situation. And having that space where firefighters can step away and have a moment to just gather their thoughts and say, speak to someone who's just willing to stand and listen is absolutely invaluable to us. I think the fact that Salvation Army respond is that we are a trusted organisation. Even if some of the firefighters and other agencies around don't realise we are a Christian church denomination, the fact that we are does help us when we do get asked to go into difficult situations. We are an organisation that will come and stand alongside people in, in times of need. The Salvation Army has a long history of supporting those responding to emergencies. During the First and Second World Wars, the Salvation Army canteen van was at the front line, giving pastoral support and a warm brew. 
and the Army Cup of Tea became a symbol of the Salvation Army's unwavering commitment to helping people in need. When COVID-19 became a global pandemic and lockdowns took their toll on vulnerable and needy people in society, the Salvation Army's emergency services organized a national network of food hubs. Worship halls became temporary warehouses and distribution points. We've been really fortunate to take over the church here at Croydon so that we can put everything for this part of London into this place and then we can ship out from here into a number of locations where the demand for food parcels has risen. I see this as a, a really vital ministry. It's an arm of everything else that we do, but coming alongside people at a time of crisis, it's just following Christ's example. We talk about the Good Samaritan, we talk about being good neighbours, all the things that are mentioned in the Bible, showing a Christ-like example then that's what we should be about in these situations. Salvation Army personnel continue supporting people facing hardship brought by the pandemic. Carl is used to supporting people, but at the start of lockdown, he had to face his own struggles. Here he is to tell his story. As a Salvation Army officer and a leader of a church, I've talked to many people facing life-threatening situations about God's love and assured them that God will always be with them in their hour of need. In March last year, I found myself in a life-threatening situation. As usual, I've been busy with my wife, Ruth. Um, I consider myself fit, perhaps a little bit overweight, but uh, generally active and healthy. On the afternoon, the Prime Minister announced the first national lockdown. I started feeling poorly and I remember very little over the next two weeks. But I'm told I was delirious and needed help to do, about, to do about everything around the house. I became seriously unwell and struggling to breathe, I was rushed into Homerton University Hospital and was admitted straight into intensive care, connected to a ventilator and put into a coma. I had contracted COVID. The last memories I have are waving goodbye to my son as I was carried from the house into a waiting ambulance, telling him I'll be home later. I remember the drive to the hospital past our church and other places I knew, and then pulled into the A&E ambulance bay. After that, I remember nothing. I had multiple organ failure. The prognosis was grave. For the next five weeks, the ICU team battled to bring me back to health. And when I finally gained consciousness, I thought I'd been in a car accident. I was really shocked to find that I had had COVID and that so many people had died from this virus while the country was in lockdown. It's been an emotional experience hearing that so many people prayed for me and my family while I was ill. I received cards from people I've never met before from as far as Japan, America, Australia. And it was the love and prayers of these people that carried my family and I through these tough days, and I believe God placed angels along the way as a source of encouragement and care exactly when we needed it. I have no doubt God hears our prayers, even if sometimes the answer we receive isn't what we think we need. I don't understand why I recovered when my brother-in-law did not, or why COVID impacted my family so much. I may never know, but I do know I'm here for a reason and that life is, here, is for living in all its fullness. When the hospital prepared Ruth for my return home, she was told that I wouldn't probably be able to walk and I would need help around the house and I would not be able to do much for myself. And the recovery would uh, take quite a while. Now more than a year later and after much hard work, I am walking again and continue to drive the Salvation Army's instant response vehicle to call outs once more. My faith continues to grow stronger. Our world has been turned upside down and so many things we took for granted and the way we lived have been swept away. However, I know God loves me and is beside me walking this difficult journey with us all. It's impossible to, th to thank everyone who has supported my family and I. That said, I will always be grateful to the brilliant Homerton Hospital NHS team 
whose dedication, drive, skill and sheer determination helped me to overcome this dreadful virus. A few of these brilliant NHS workers are here tonight. They are true professionals and I admire all of them for what they have done for me and so many other poorly individuals. Please will you join me in thanking them. Two weeks after I was admitted to hospital, it was Palm Sunday, a day when the church reflects on Jesus' journey into Jerusalem. As the crowd shouted, praise to God, Luke 19 says that if the people were quiet, even the stones will cry out. In my family's darkest times, when they were lost for words, other people cried out in prayer on our behalf. For him, I will join us to sing one of my favorite songs, Raise a Hallelujah, a song that became Ruth's testimony of hope in God during these days. A reminder that up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King, our God, is alive.
louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. I raise a hallelujah. Hi, this is Nina Wadia. I would like to wish everyone from the Salvation Army a lovely evening and I hope your concert goes really well. Um, thank you for all your very, very hard work, especially with the emergency services and for those people who suffer trauma. Lastly, I would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a fabulous New Year. I just wanted to send this message um, to say thank you to the Salvation Army. Thank you for all the work that you've done, um, especially throughout the pandemic uh, with all your community centres and food banks. Um, you've, you make a massive difference to a lot of people in a really difficult time. So I want to say thank you for that and good luck for the concert. I hope it's amazing. I know it will be. You'll all be dressed much smarter than I am right now. Um, have a wonderful time and Merry Christmas.
Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Oh. We're thrilled you're here. What are you singing for us? Oh, um, it's a pleasure to be here, honestly. Thank you for having me. And tonight I'm singing Sweet Little Jesus Boy, uh, which is so gorgeous. So many greats have sang this song. And I've really looked into the history of it and want to have the right intention. It's very kind of sweet and, and innocent. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm really kind of yeah, honored to sing it today. I hope it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> We're so looking forward to it. We can't wait to hear you. Thank you so yeah, much for being with us tonight. You. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Yes! <laughs> <laughs>
Hello, I'm Tanya Franks. This festive time of year always reminds me of the Salvation Army when I hear the bands playing on the streets and it always fills me with such Christmas cheer. However, I'd really like us to think about the work that they do behind the scenes, the help they give to people, particularly to elderly people at this time of year who I know their situations can be difficult and also for those living in care homes. The Salvation Army do a most remarkable job and have done for so many decades now. I would like to wish you all a wonderful evening this evening. I hope the concert goes amazingly and I'm wishing you all a very, very Merry Christmas. Hi, this is Michael Flatley. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the Salvation Army for all of the great work they do in helping people that are experiencing homelessness. They have done so much for so long to help so many. Winter is coming. It breaks my heart to see so many people lying on the street and families with little children and no place to call home. If we could all just pull together with the Salvation Army, we can help some of those people. Please give generously. Please support the Salvation Army.
It's been wonderful to be here tonight and to be able to revisit the birth of Jesus through such music, the singing of the carols and through the spoken word. Our hearts are, are surely filled with joy and hope again as we've been drawn again to the remarkable birth of a baby who we are led to believe is the pivot point of all history. This baby, soon to be the man, Jesus, adored by shepherds who knew him to be Savior, Messiah, the Christ, the Lord. This Jesus who wise men bowed in worship before they offered their gifts. This Jesus was God in flesh. God the Son physically entering our history. Now that's quite a hard thing to understand and to take on board. But I heard a story a long time ago that I visit, revisit every Christmas, which has helped me. It was a story about a dad who wanted to teach his young seven-year-old son the essence of this great world-changing event, the coming of Jesus into the world. They were walking along a beach, and further along the beach there was a flock of seagulls. And the dad said to the son, go and see if you can stand in the middle of those seagulls. You know what seven-year-olds are like? Ran as fast as he could towards the seagulls. And of course, when he was why, still some way away, the seagulls took flight, disappeared further down the beach, turned to, back to his dad. Couldn't do it. Try again, son. So this time, he was a lot more stealthy. He almost crawled his way towards the seagulls. He got a lot closer this time. But just when he thought he was going to make it, one of the seagulls became alarmed by the presence of this little lad and took off. And you know what happened. The rest of the seagulls took flight as well. The little boy went back to his dad and said, Dad, it's just not possible. I can't do it. And the dad said to him, with a twinkle in his eye, Son, the only way that you could stand in the middle of those seagulls and be accepted by them is to become a seagull. Well, it, it's not the perfect way of explaining the Christmas story. I, I concede that. But it helped that little boy and it helps me to appreciate God coming to earth for a time wonderfully becoming our size in order that we might know him, in order that we might accept him, in order that we might understand the true nature of God and his love for the world. We, we see this all in Jesus, you see. The one who St. John explains as being from the very beginning of time, the one who was the from the beginning of all things, the word of God. Being with God, said St. John, and being God. And then John goes on to say that this word, this expression of God becomes flesh and lives amongst us. Or as St. Paul in one of his letters describes and explains Jesus, Paul says, he's the image of the invisible God. He's the one who makes Father God known to us. We sang earlier so well, veiled in flesh the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel, God with us. And that's why we're here. That's why we're celebrating Christmas again. The miracle of Christmas, and my, what a miracle it is. There are lots of brilliant lines in the carols which we've been singing this evening, but one that struck me again as we uh, were singing it a little, a little town of Bethlehem, a line that says, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. My goodness, there have been so many fears for us and the whole world since 2020. No one needs reminding of that, but the world does need reminding that amidst the fears, there is hope and that we have an ongoing renewal of hope and need of that, where hope isn't about wishful thinking, you know, I hope my team wins tonight, or I hope the trains are running when we leave. No, not just that kind of hoping. Hope is much stronger. In the Bible, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. 
Charles Wesley, the great Methodist hymn writer, nailed it when he wrote, Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our sins and fears release us, let us find our rest in thee. All thy people's consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. You see, Jesus Christ is our hope. He is the one who delivers on all the promises of God that we can claim. He is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father. He's Prince of Peace. He's the light of the world. He's the bread of heaven. He's the good shepherd. He's the door, the way, and the truth. He's the resurrection and the life. In fact, Jesus explained that he came into the world that we might have life in all its fullness. Well, in the Old Testament, Isaiah prophesied, and Matthew in his gospel repeated the prophecy. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. It was the prayer we sang a little while ago. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. And because of this, when we intentionally abide and call upon him, we now need never walk alone. Even when we have to walk through the raging storms of life, as most certainly we all will have to do, we can hold our heads high knowing that Jesus Christ is with us. And so we can walk with hope in our hearts towards and through Christmas and into 2022 and whatever that might hold for us. So may you and your loved ones have a blessed and happy Christmas. And may your hearts again be filled with the certainty of God's presence in Christ by his Holy Spirit. And thus, may you be filled with a song of hope.
great to have you back at the Royal Albert Hall. How does it feel to be back on stage? It's nice, yeah. I mean, particularly having had the two years being a professional musician that we've had, which concerts have sort of kept going, but um, to get right back into the groove of things is, uh, is definitely, definitely good news for everybody, yeah. So why of all the concerts, why this one? Why the Salvation Army? Well, it's, it's, where, I, it's where I learned to play, and, and it's given me my, my career along with you know, so many others in the business. Um, and I'm still, I'm still, I still worship at Hendon Core. Um, so it's, it, it's a big, it's still a big part of me. I still go to the, the core every, every Sunday that I can. And um, if I can support in a tiny, tiny way that I can by being here tonight uh, to contribute to such a great evening, then it's always a pleasure to come back. It's particularly in a venue like this, you know. Yeah, thanks for great. being with us. My pleasure. Thanks, thanks. Bill. Cheers.
We are nearing the end of this uh, wonderful evening, and I do want to thank you all for being with us. This year, more than ever, we do not take your presence for granted. And I'm sure you want to join me in thanking all the participants, especially the trumpeters, Philip Cobb, Mike Lovett, Dan Newell. <laughs> the wonderful, the wonderful Music Man participants, Our organist who's with us for the first time, Paul Leddington-Wright. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, violinist John Hooper, for him. Portia Emare, who was wonderful. I thought her singing was just beautiful tonight. Our readers, Baroness Floella Benjamin, Sinita and Nick Hewer. And finally, the International Staff Band and the International Staff Songsters. Thank you, friends. Thank you. This past year has been very tough for many in our communities, and the future is very uncertain. So many Salvation Army people have worked tirelessly, carrying on helping people even as the pandemic rages on. But your generous financial support means that we're able to provide the best possible support and care where it is most needed. So thank you very much. But there is still lots to do. And as you leave this evening, there will be some trainee Salvation Army officers in the foyer with buckets who are keen to take your donations so that we can continue where we are most needed most. We cannot do it without your support. So please, be as generous as you can. Now, for that final carol, would you please stand up and let's sing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Thank you very much, everybody.
Good night. God bless you and happy Christmas. Thank you for coming. Good night. What a fantastic evening we've had here at the Royal Albert Hall. I think I've nearly lost my voice, but it's been wonderful and I uh, hope you enjoyed being with us. Ooh, yeah. Still not late if you wish to donate. Uh, there's lots of work to do this year still and next year. Merry Christmas and good night. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. <laughs>